Hello guys, once again, and welcome again to our Web Systems and Technology Lecture. So for today, we are going to discuss the sixth of our lessons, and this is all about cascading style sheets. Our lesson objectives for the day is to understand the fundamentals of CSS, including the idea of selectors, methods of setting colors and backgrounds, way of formatting fonts and text, styling, uh, user interface elements, and all others. Understand the concept of internal and external CSS. So, before we actually define what a cascading style sheets is, um, they're actually used to save a lot of work because it can control the layout of multiple web pages all at once. Now, to define it, the CSS is fondly referred, I mean, the, the CSS rather is a simple design language intended to simplify the process of making web pages presentable. Um, CSS handles the look and feel part of a web page. Using CSS, you can control the color of the text, the style fonts, the spacing between paragraphs, how columns are sized and laid out, what background images or colors are used, layout designs, variations in display for different devices, and screen sizes as well as a, vari as a variety of other effects. Now, just a quick tip about using CSS, um, or about CSS rather, the word cascading means that a style applied to a parent element will also be applied to all children elements within the same parent. So, if you set the color of the body text to blue, all headings, paragraphs, and other text elements within body will also get the same color unless you specify something else for a specific element. So, when using, um, what do you call this? When using CSS, we need to know um, a lot or a couple of things regarding it. But later on, uh, we will discuss those, like uh, how can we add CSS in HTML documents because there are actually three various ways and we will discuss those as we move along on our lesson. Now, what are the advantages of using CSS? Do we really need it? Um, do we really need it? Uh, kailangan ba meron po nito, ma'am, sa, sa aming um, web design? In fact, hindi naman to required na gawin, no? It's just so happened that using CSS will really save you a lot of work. Kaya, still, kapag uh, maalam na po tayo on how to, to use CSS, as much as we could, sana i-implement po natin yung paggamit mo. These are the advantages of using them. CSS saves time. You can write CSS once and then use the same sheet in multiple HTML pages. You can define a style for each HTML element and apply it to so as many as web pages as you can. Pages load faster. If you are using CSS, you do not need to write HTML tag um, and apply it. I mean, you, you do not need to write HTML tag attributes every time. Just write one CSS rule of a tag and apply it to all the occurrences of that tag. So, uh, less code means faster download times. Of course, it helps for easy maintenance. To make a global change for your design, simply change the style and all elements in all the web pages will be automatically updated. Superior styles to HTML. CSS has a, my, has a much wider array of attributes than HTML, so you can give a far better um, a far better look to your HTML page in comparison to HTML attributes. 
Style sheets allows you your content to be optimized for more than one type of device. So that is why one of the advantages of CSS is that it is compatible with multiple devices. By using the same HTML document, different versions of a website can be presented for a handheld devices such as our mobile phones, uh, PDAs, or printing. Global Web Standards Now, HTML attributes are being depicted and it is being recommended to use CSS. So, it's actually a good idea to start using CSS in all the HTML pages to make them compatible for future browsers. So, ilan to sa mga advantages of using um, CSS on our web design. So, again, just to recap, Number one, CSS saves times. Number two, the pages load faster. Number three, easy maintenance. Number four, superior styles to HTML. Number five, multiple device compatibility. And lastly, global web standards. So next po is our, uh, the next topic that we'll be discussing rather is who actually creates and maintains CSS. Now, CSS is created and maintained through a group of people within the W3C called the CSS Working Groups. The CSS Working Group creates documents called specifications. When a, spec uh, when a, a specification has been discussed and officially ratified by the W3C members, it becomes a recommendation already. These ratified specifications are called recommendations because the W3C has no control over the actual implementation of the language. Independent companies and organizations create that software. Please note that the World Wide Web Consortium or W3C is a group that makes recommendations about the internet works and how it should develop. They're actually not laying out standard, but others call it like that, pero wala naman talagang standard na sinusunod on web designing and, and programming. It so happened that this organization or W3C organization are um, recommending such um, use on different web, web designs and programs. Next po is the CSS syntax. So we have actually a couple of things to, read, to know about the syntax of CSS. No, uh, Number one is the selector. When we say selector, it is an HTML tag at which a style will be applied. This could be any tag like heading one, tables, paragraph, and so on. We also have the property. A property is a type of attribute of HTML tag. Put simply, all the HTML attributes are con converted into CSS properties. They could be color, border, etc. Then we also have the value. Values are assigned to properties. For example, the color property can have value either red or the hexadecimal value of hash, F1, 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 etc. So as an example, we have here, for example, your a selector is your table, and then our de declaration would be the border. Border is the property, and then after the colon is are your values. You can change the border line size. You can change the type of the border, and then you can also change the color of the border. So this is our sample syntax. For this um, example, Later on, magkikreate tayo ng HTML document uh, wherein we are going to change the type of the, or sorry, the cascading style sheet of our HTML. So let us open, for further example, let us open a new um, notepad. So hold on, I'll be pulling up my resources here. So on this case, we are still going to use our Notepad++. And then, of course, we are going to start with our posts.
Okay, we are gonna type doc type. Sana na pa, medyo na dudulang lang si mam. Doc type HTML. Of course, this tag is going to define that uh, we are using the latest HTML5. Then the HTML tag, head, and then of course the title. Um, in this case, let's put CSS. And then our head. We open a body tag. Close it. And then the HTML tag. So let's save this first now before we actually proceed to the entire um, codes of our web page. So enable for us to actually use a couple of the um, tags that will pop up once it's already saved as a hypertext markup language file. So for this, let me add in as um, lesson lesson six underscore CSS. All right. So inside the body, when we create a style sheet, we can um we can actually do it on various ways. Pero sabi ko nga kanina. But for the meantime, I I'm going to create a style sheet that is declared inside my um inside my HTML. Okay. Then, para makita natin kung ano ba yung changes niya later on. Okay, hold on. So, wait lang po. Okay. Ay, sorry. Ilalagay ko to sa loob ng aking um, head. So, Nag-create ako dito ng title. Sing it yung style dito after the title. Um, I wanted to create a style for, let's say, a paragraph. Now, I will be typing in the letter P. As you notice, wala tong, um less than and greater than sign because we, this is how we are going to create our CSS. So instead, we use the curly braces, opening curly braces, and then inside it, para lang makita nyo, um, we can access the color. Uh, for example, ang paragraph ko, gagawin ko cyan. Tapos, ang text align nito. Ito, as you can see, as you type in, no? Pwede nyo i-select na dito from the drop-down list box of the uh, Notepad++ plus plus, kung ano yung gusto nyo baguhin. Text align. And then, uh, let's say, by uh, automatically, lahat ng paragraph ko, naka-center na. Semicolon. It's like we are creating a programming language, no? And then, let's use the font size. Ang gusto ko, by uh, default, pag niload na tong aking si, uh, web page, dahil meron na akong um, CSS na pinreate, yung font size ko, gagawin kong 50 pixels. So, yun yung mga paragraph ko. No? Now, I'll be closing this one. And then, uh, proceed na tayo sa pagka-close din ng style. I'm done creating this style sheet for my... HTML and then um, pasok na tayo sa body so take note na nilagay ko po yung cascading style sheet natin sa loob ng ating heading or no, sorry, ng head tag now inside the body kailangan makapag-create tayo ng content na may kinalaman about paragraph so for the meantime maglalagay lang ako ng heading to like Para lang, ano, mayroong title, kumbaga. Cascading style sheets. And then, close natin ang ating padding 2. And then, mag-create po tayo ng paragraph, no? Para magkaroon tayo ng, um, ng sample dito. Kung ano yung itsura ng magiging a style na ginamit natin. So, this is a sample Paragraph. All right. Now, since nag-create na po ako ng aking 
um, paragraph. You know, for sure na kung tama yung pagkakakreate natin ng ating style, dapat mag-take effect yung style na, na, na ginawa ko dito sa loob ng HTML file natin. Now, before we actually see kung ano ba talaga yung outcome nito, I wanted to run this on a web browser without actually the style yet. No? So, wala pa yung style. Let me open the, bra the, the file. Okay, so, yung ating lesson 6, CSS. So, ito yung ating paragraph. So, this is a simple paragraph. Now, I want you to take a look kung ano yung magiging difference niya once na nilagay na natin pabalik yung ating style sheet. Yung ating CSS. Let me save it. Go back and then refresh. So, ito na yung ating style na in-apply dun sa ating paragraph. Now, kaya ko nasabi kanina na, na one of the advantages of using CSS is for you to save time. Bakit? Kung ikaw ang gusto mo talagang style is lahat ng paragraph mo, ganito yung kulay, ganito yung font. For example, gusto mo, ayaw mo lang ng, ng plain black lang to. Ang gusto mo mangyari is uh, maging uh, red yung text mo. So, isang beses mo na lang siyang gagawin. And lahat ng paragraphs na meron ka sa loob nito, um, itong HTML file document mo, is mag a apply na yung style na ginawa mo. So, it would really save you time. Hindi ka na mahihirapan na gawin siya one by one. Kasi diba dati, pinakitaan ko kayo ng demonstration na dito tayo nagpapalit ng, for example, ng color ng ating text, o ng, ng style natin, ng alignment. So, isa-isa mo yung gagawin kung hindi ka gagamit ng cascading style sheets. No? So, yun po, yung isa sa mga kagandahan ng paggamit ng cascading style sheets. Or CSS for short. Now, um, remember that when you create additional paragraph on your code, Lahat po ng paragraph na i-add mo dito is may apply yung ating um, style na ginamit. Unless otherwise, magkikreate ka ng panibagong style para sa isang paragraph lang. So, City College of Calabar. So, as you can see, lahat po ng paragraph na meron tayo is ma-apply yung style na ating ginawa. So, later on, I will be discussing what are the other ways for us to actually create CSS because there are a lot of things. But before that, let's go ahead and continue our discussion about CSS selectors. Ano po ba yung CSS selectors? These are actually used to find or select the HTML elements that, where you want to apply the style. No? So, we have a couple of um, things that we need to know about CSS selectors. Let us start with the element or type selectors. The element selector selects HTML elements based on the element name. So, for example, we, we will create CSS 1.html of element or type selectors. Later on, uh, magkakarate tayo ng document na um, panibagong um, CSS. So, ito po ay Sinave natin yung, yung first uh, example natin as, uh, ano nga bang file name nun? Sinave natin siya as, this is actually already an example of element or type selectors. No, yun na yung pinaka-example natin for number one. Then, the next, one, the, the next would be um, the ID selector. The ID selector uses the ID attribute of an HTML to select a specific element. So, the ID of an element is unique within a page. So, the ID selector is used to select one unique element to select an element with a specific ID. So, all we need to do is to write a hash character followed by the ID element or by the ID of that element where you wanted to apply it to. So, later on, gagawa po tayo ng example. So, let's make an, exa an example of an ID 
um, ID selector CSS. No? On this case, gagawa po tayo ng panibagong HTML document. So, let us open our notepad. Then, isa-save po natin ito as save muna natin siya. Lesson 6 HCSS ko naman. No? CSS ko. As HTML file. Alright, so ang ating walang kamatayang doc type, html, and then opening html tag, then the head, okay. so dito ilalagay po natin yung style, opening tag, and then ito yung id selector natin, hash, red, and then Let's say, babaguhin natin dito yung align to right. Okay, colon. Color to red. Kaya ako siya tinawag na hash. And then, let's close this one and close our style. Alright. So, close lang po natin yung ating head. Head tag. Close natin. And then, let's make something inside our body. So, so body tag, lalagyan po natin, for example, the same pa rin, pero gagamitan natin siya ng ID sa lakon. Now, sa loob ng paragraph, for example, uh, lalagyan natin dito yung ID ng style na gusto natin i-apply. So, in this example, since meron tayong red ID, yung ginawa natin kanina, ito po yun. Um, lalagay lang natin yung sa value ng ID natin na attribute and then sa paragraph natin lagay natin ng laman city college of Talamba then close natin yung paragraph tag for example maglagay pa tayo dito ng additional paragraph Talamba Laguna okay. siguro Palitan ko itong alignment ko ng center. Okay, center. And then, close na natin yung ating body tag. My apologies, body. Okay, sure. And then, close din natin yung ating HTML tag. And let's save the changes. Now, let us go back to our, um, sorry, to our folder. And i-open ko lang yung ating second CSS example. Now, as you can see, we use the ID selector in here. Sa first paragraph lang nag-apply yung ating style. Kasi um, by using the ID selector, we are actually just applying the style that we created for a specific element where we wanted to apply this style for or the style to rather. So in this case, in apply lang po natin yung red um, font color and then center alignment to the first paragraph that we created by accessing its ID now which is hash red. So ito po yun. Now, ito yung red um, ID name na to. Pwede nyo itong palitan. Uh, any name that you want. But I would suggest na gagawin nyo lang siyang one word. No? One word and it should be start with a, starts with a letter. You cannot use a special characters such as question mark, exclamation point. So, it's it's much better to just use um, letters and then after the letter, you can add like a number and then pwede naman mo. Para lang siyang file naming kung convention mo. Hindi ka pwedeng mag-start sa, um, sa number. Dapat letter mo na. Then, it can be followed by number. And as you can see, while you are typing it, no, itong blue, kanina napansin mo, may nakalagay na doon blue one. Nare-recognize na rin siya ng notepad mo na meron kang ganung name na style. So, that's actually a good example of an ID selector. Okay, the next thing that we are going to discuss is the CSS selector or class selector. For the class selector, it selects HTML elements 
with a specific class attribute. So to select elements with a specific class, write a period character followed by the class name. So, magkakaroon pa rin tayo dito ng um, parang example natin and in using the CSS class selector. So, on this case, create na lang po tayo ng panibagong file. Then, isave natin ito as almost the same file name but we will be editing the number to 3. Okay? Okay, so ito yung HTML. Lesson 6 natin, and then a CSS 3. So, next po natin na gagawin is the third example natin ng class selector. Course. Okay, so guys, we are going to create an example of our class selector. Now, for this one, um, create lang tayo ng our doc type ito lang po Ayan. so a while ago sinave ko to as ano as lesson 6 underscore css4 no? so doc type html and then yung ating html tag then yung ating head and then yung style natin. For this, kikreate tayo ng a couple of um, styles with, var with different variations para makita natin paano ba ina-apply yung ating um, yung ating um, class selector, no? Hold on, sorry. Alright. So, let's continue our code. Okay, for example, gawa tayo ng mga different um, styles. Uh, gawa tayo ng p.center. Center. And then, gawa tayo ng, or i-access natin yung text alignment. Gawin natin center. And then, gawin natin siyang color red. Okay, yan ay yung ating first style. Next, be that large. No? Sabi ko nga kanina, magkikreate tayo ng different styles na i-access natin later on. So, for example, yung size naman yung papalitan natin. Gawin natin 50 pixels. Okay, and then next po, close na natin to. Add pa tayo ng panibago pa. Hmm, siguro, gamitan natin ito na... Ah, hindi. Pwede na to. Para lang makita natin yung changes, no? I-apply natin siya sa iba't ibang element. So, gama tayo ng body. For example, lagay lang tayo ng heading 1. Demo of the dot class selector. Okay? Then, close po natin yung H1. Okay, so... Uh, let's say, may inax na create ulit tayo ng panibagong heading at inaccess natin yung class center. No, ito. So, yung class center. Let us see kung i-apply ba ng ating browser yung ating ginawang style for H2. This heading as center class style. Okay, so later on, tingnan natin na kung may i-apply pa siya. And then, gawa naman tayo ng paragraph tag class gamitin na natin yung center center style na ginawa natin. And then, this paragraph paragraph will be red and of course dapat mas center align to no kasi nga do according din sa ating style na ginawa kanina naka center yung alignment at color red yung paragraph then gawa tayo ng additional pa na paragraph this time ga i-access natin yung center 
and large. At the same time, sa loob siya ng ating class value. So, this paragraph will actually um, be red, center aligned, and in a large font size. Kasi doon sa ating um, large na style, dinefine po natin yung ating font size as 50 pixels. Okay? So, close na po natin yung ating body tag. And of course, our HTML tag. Let's save this and take a look at our example. No? Okay. Right. Refresh lang po natin to. Ah, sorry. Ibang file pala yung aking ina-access. Ito ay CSS4. <gasps> okay. So, demo for class. Selector. This heading is center. Class style. This paragraph will be the red and center aligned. Now, if you notice po, guys, no, yung ating H2 na this heading as center class style doesn't really have an effect. Kahit na tinawag po natin yung class center which has a value of center aligned and red color. So, hindi siya affected. Why? Kasi nga, this is actually not a paragraph element. As you can see, it's a heading element. So, on our style sheet, we are very specific that the center class is actually applicable for paragraphs. The tulad ng large class is only um, applicable for paragraphs. So, therefore, itong ating H2 na ginamit sa ating code is actually not affected. Not affected by the CSS na in-access natin kahit ilagay pa natin dito na ina-access natin yung class center. Now, on the first paragraph naman na kinerate natin, this paragraph will be red and center aligned because ang in-access lang natin is the class center. And on the third one, may in-apply yung center alignment, yung red paragraph, at yung pangatlong style which is a 50 pixels font size. So, dito, kung napapansin nyo, we can actually access multiple um, styles that we defined for our class using the dot and the name of the class. So, parang for example, kung in the future gusto nyo lang na uh, mag-create ng additional paragraph, pero ang gusto mo lang kunin is yung large size, is pwede mong gawin nang hindi mo na kailangang i-edit pa yung mga styles na gusto mong i-apply. No? This is the third paragraph. Yeah. So, on this case, ang ma may access lang natin is yung 50 pixels na size ng ating paragraph. Which is this one. Okay? So, that's actually the, um, ano, the example of a class selector. So, the next thing that we will be discussing is actually our um, what do you call this? is actually our universal selector. So, in universal selector, rather than selecting elements of a specific type, the universal selector quite simply matches the name of any element type. So, kung kanina mo siyang element gusto niya apply dun siya pwede mag-apply. Now, let's create an additional example for this. Alright, so our next example would be a different um, CSS form. Okay. Um, ang gawin natin is to uh, edit the following. No? Ito naman yung ating CSS form. Okay. <coughs> sorry, sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Device. 
Exercise natin. Papalitan lang natin yun na. Um, style. No? So, erase lang natin yung style na ginawa natin. And then, uh, for univer universal selectors, ibig sabihin, pangkalahatan to. Um, type natin yung asterisk. The asterisk character indicates all. No? Lahat ang gusto mong magyan nito. So, for example, nakasenter lahat. And then, um, color po, lahat is uh, blue. Alright? Then, close lang natin yung ating style. So, for example, wala na tayong i-access dito talaga na last name or ID name. So, by default, all of the um, style na dinamit natin or na i-define natin sa ating style sheet will be applied to all elements. Okay, so, yun ang ating tinatawag na universal class selector or sorry, universal selectors only. So, punta na natin niya ito example out. Na ito yung ginawa natin kanina. CSS4. So, nilagay natin center align at ang color ay blue. Kahit anong klase ng element ko, i-apply niya. So, mapa table man, mapa heading man, mapa paragraph man, lahat. Dahil gumamit na tayo ng universal selectors. So, yun po yung ating different um, la, uh, different style selectors. If I may add, there is another one which is called descendant selectors. Now, ano naman yung descendant selectors? So, in a while, uh, discuss na natin siya. Bago tayo nagbigay ng example. Close ko natin. So, yung ating slide. Let's go back to the slide. No? So, Bago tayo pumunta sa the descendant selectors, ito yung ating CSS selectors. Element or type selectors, ID selector, class selector, and the universal selectors. Now we go to the descendant selectors. Suppose you wanted to apply a style rule to a particular element when it lies inside a particular element. So as given in the following example, style rule will apply to EM element only when it lies inside a UL element tag. So, yung adding emphasis na element, ito, emphasis element, is may apply lang kung siya ay nasa loob ng unordered list. So, for example, mag-create tayo ng descendant selectors na dito sa ating notepad. So, for example, dito mag-create tayo ng additional um, style. Oh, sorry. UL emphasis. So, color red. So, i-apply lang yung ating emphasis na style kung yung inyong element ay nasa unordered list. So, dito, wala naman tayong unordered list na nakalagay sa body natin, no? Save natin to So, kanina, kung ang color ng text natin ay blue, meron tayo ditong red. Siyempre, if you know how this would work, walang magiging changes din sa ating output. Kasi, yung ginamit natin na element na emphasis ay i-apply lang kapag merong unordered list. So, for example, nag-create dito ng unordered list item, Then, tsaka lang i-apply yung emphasis doon. Right? So, if you remember, nagawa na natin to before. Uh, let's say name. Dagdag lang tayo. Address. Okay. And then, contact number. Para lang may makita tayong U. Close natin yung U. Alright. Save it and let's go back to the outcome. Okay, 
hold on. So, yeah. Ito, no? UL natin. Um, name, LI, uh, address, contact number. So, ito, kung mapapansin nyo, in-apply pa rin yung ating universal list kasi on this example, meron na tayong dinipay na para sa lahat. So, ibig sabihin, So, now, bakit kaya yung in-apply natin na style sheet ay hindi nag-take-effect dun sa ating um, sa ating unordered list na ginawa? Now, if you remember, meron tayo dito kaninang um, code for universal, no? So, medyo in-edit ko lang ito. Tinanggal ko yung universal selector natin. Balik tayo dun sa outcome natin kanina. So, ito na yung outcome ng ating um, style. Kung mapapansin nyo, uh, sa style natin, lahat ng new uh, ordered list natin kanina na merong emphasis is doon nag apply yung color red. Now, bakit man hindi po siya nag-apply sa UL? Kasi number one, wala tayong naka-emphasis na element doon sa ating um, UL. For example, nag-add ako dito ng data. No? So, the floor, Andrea, yung name, address, Rulad Kabuyaw. So, nag a ko ng data rito para mas ma-appreciate nyo kung bakit um, or pa, ano yung advantage niya kapag ka nag-create tayo ng ganitong klaseng descendant um, styles. No? For example, contact number 0918 For example lang. Save po natin yung ating ginawang changes. No, ito yung mga additional natin na um, example. So, for example, ako gusto ko itong i-emphasis yung name ko. No? Lagyan ko lang ng M, emphasis dito. Alright. Now, itong name ko, naka-emphasis siya. So, technically, dapat maging bold yung itsura ng name. No, magkaroon ng emphasis. Now, kung nakita niya rito, um, Yung emphasis natin ay nagkaroon ng application din sa name natin na value. Pero the rest is hindi affected. No? Yung red natin na color dito lang nakalagay. Kasi nga, um, dito lang siya applicable sa unordered list under emphasis. Kaya the rest of the paragra paragraphs ay nanatiling gano'n. So, nanatiling um, H2 paragraph and so on. So, ayun. Itong other list natin hindi affected kasi hindi naman sila uh, nagkaroon ng additional emphasis dito sa loob ng kanilang um, loob ng ating elements. So, yun po yung ating descendant. Ibig sabihin, um, nagkakaroon tayo ng kumbaga sa madaling salita, parang nested, nested styles sa loob ng, from one element to another sub-element. So, yun po yung ating descendant um, descendant selectors. Now, ito yung nabanggit ko kanuna that there are actually various ways to insert CSS. Meron tayong tinatawag na inline styles. This uh, inline CSS is used to apply a unique style to a single HTML element. An inline CSS uses the style attribute of an HTML element. Meron din tayong internal style sheet. So, for internal style sheet, um, these are defined within the style um, style tag. So, ito yung ginawa natin kanina. Most of our examples are all internal uh, style sheet. And then, we also have the external style sheet. So, for this, each page must include a reference to the external style sheet file inside the link element. So don't worry about that because we actually we're actually going to um, discuss all of these ways and give you demonstration on how we can use different style sheets. In fact, nagamit pa natin to from the last couple of lessons that we have. Itong inline styles. I'm sorry. Itong inline styles at yung internal style sheet. Kanina na lang, ginawa na natin itong style element na ito. So, yun na yung example natin ng internal style sheets. So, magpapakita lang na ako ng um, additional example for inline style sheets para tayo ay ma 
ma-review review no kung paano ba ginagamit yung inline styles. Sabi nga dito, ina-apply lang ang inline CSS to a specific um or to a single HTML element. So, let's open this same example for our inline style. So, for example, gusto ko lang i-apply yung style ko to this certain paragraph. So, lagay ko lang style. Uh, for example, gusto kong palitan siya ng color. Gawin ko siyang red kama. Gusto kong palitan yung font uh, size niya to 20 pixels. Uh, semicolon para ang other end. And then, bago natin i-end yung ating style. So, this is an example of an inline style. Kasi in-apply lang natin to style sheet na to for this specific paragraph. So, ito yung magiging outcome po niya. Now, as you notice, the first paragraph has becomes um, 50 pixels in size or font size. And then, yung color po niya is naging red. Okay, that's an example of an inline style. And as I have mentioned, yung another way of creating style sheet is yung um, using internal style sheets. No, ito naman yung example na. This is an example of an internal style sheet because we actually use the style part. And then lastly, yung kung ating um, yung ating external style sheets. So dito kailangan po natin mag-create na uh, panibagong file. Let's say this one. Okay, tayo ng panibagong file. Okay. So, on this case, uh, kailangan ko po ito save as uh, save natin ito. Save na muna natin siya as external CSS dot CSS. So, Meron din naman tayo dito. Pagkawalan dito yung cascading style sheet na file, kailangan natin siyang save as that CSS. Don't forget this extension file name unless otherwise magiging regular text lang ito. Ha? External CSS. So, this one, lagay natin, for example, yung body. Wala na tayong ibang gagamitin. Diretso na tayo sa ating style. Hindi na natin gagamitin ng style tag. For example, background color is cyan. And then, kapag may H1 tayo, um, gamit tayo ng color na uh, violet. Tapos, kapag may mga paragraph naman tayo, gamit tayo ng color na um, blue. Okay. So, save lang natin ito. Don't forget nga pala yung ating mga semi-color. Okay. After each style po yun. Okay. So, save lang natin. And then, once na save na natin yung changes, balik na tayo sa ating example. Okay, no? Ito na yung example din na gagamitin natin. How do we actually access the external file? So, balik tayo sa ating HTML code. Okay, hold on. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, so dito sa ating, um, what do you sa ating code, medyo magmamodify tayo, ano? So, sa loob ng ating style, Alisin lang natin ito. For example, access na natin yung external file natin. Gagamit tayo ng link. Link. And then, rel attribute. Saan natin siya i-re-relate? So, style sheet. Style sheet. Sorry. And then, ano yung, um, ano yung pangalan niya? No? So, pangalan ng ating CSS na ginawa. So, ito yung ginawa natin, file name. External, external CSS.css. 
alright then, close lang po natin. Now, dito, nililink natin yung ating style sheet to an external, external CSS, not CSS file. So, tignan po natin yung ating outline. So, ano na ito yung outline natin? Ngayon, ito na siya. So, as you remember, no, as you remember, na-create tayo ng ating body, background, color, at cyan. Yung color natin na H1 dahil meron tayong H1. So, dahil meron tayong H1 na tag, in-apply din yung style na ginamit natin for H1 which is to make the color of it as violet. Now, ma'am, bakit po yung ibang paragraph dito ay mukhang hindi naman affected ng external style sheet na ginawa namin? For example po, yung first paragraph, red pa rin po ito, eh dapat siya ay color blue na katulad yung second and third paragraph. Now, let's take a look back on our given code. Remember that we created an inline style sheets a while ago for the first paragraph. So, on the first paragraph, inassign natin yung style na color red at font size na 20 pixels. Now, um, there is a hierarchy in following or for the web browser to follow the sheets or style sheets rather that we are creating for our HTML files. Now, when the browsers was, um, if, we, if the code provides multiple kinds of inserting CSS, sinusunod niya yung ganitong hierarchy. Uunahin niya muna yung inline style sheet. Isusunod niya yung internal style sheet, yung katulad ng ginawa natin kanina. No? Then, tsaka niya pa, gagawin yung external style sheet na inililink mo dun sa HTML document mo. So, ibig sabihin, mauuna yung inline, next is style, and lastly is yung external. In following, or for the web browser, in following the style sheets that we are creating. So, yun po yung ating different ways to insert CSS to our HTML documents. Now, I hope you guys was able to um, learn something about the, this discussion today. So, as a summary, this lesson covers the fundals of CSS, including the idea of selectors, methods of setting colors and backgrounds, way of formatting fonts, and text styling UI elements. These examples given help you better understand the topics discussed in this lesson, which guides you in the useful tips and important notes in web designing using CSS. But I hope you guys um, still would work out on, um, you know, looking for additional examples online so that mas marami pa po tayong pwedeng i-apply na, um, what do you call that, na mga different CSS sa ating web designing. Hindi lang itong na-discuss natin, sobrang dami pa. So, for this, um, this is the ending of our lesson 6. And if you have further questions regarding CSS, you can always email me at rdpedosho.ccc.edu.ph or rdpedosho at ccc.edu.ph So, that's all for today, guys. Thank you and goodbye.